Here, our next uh, speaker today, Ellie Kaplan, asks and perhaps is going to answer for us the question, what, what, is, what would happen if perhaps you didn't have to wait for the symptoms to arrive before you could make a diagnosis and, and maybe begin to begin receiving some, some treatment for something? We're going to examine that as Ellie is the founding CEO of NeuroTrack, which is an early stage company that has developed technology that can diagnose the pre-symptoms of Alzheimer's. So not waiting for the disease onset to actually occur. She's going to talk to us a little bit about that breakthrough technology. Please welcome Ellie Kaplan. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk to you today about Alzheimer's disease, a disease so destructive that it causes you to forget how to dress yourself, how to feed yourself, who your wife of 40 years is. This is my grandfather, Max, a brilliant eye surgeon who slowly, painstakingly disappeared before my eyes. But it's not just my grandfather. Take a moment and look to your left and to your right. If we don't do something, one of the two people sitting next to you will have Alzheimer's by the age of 85. Alzheimer's today is an epidemic. In the US, just now, today, there are 5.4 million people suffering from Alzheimer's. By 2050, we expect that number to grow to more than 15 million. And by 2100, in our children's lifetime, we expect that number to be more than 300 million people worldwide. That's the entire population of the United States today. Despite all of the work that re researchers and scientists are doing, the disease continues to elude in terms of what causes it, how to, tr how to diagnose it, and how to treat it. And while there are many drugs on the market that treat the symptoms of Alzheimer's, there are no drugs on the market that prevent the disease from occurring. And it's not for lack of trying. They've tried over and over again. So why are the drug companies failing? We don't know if it's the drugs themselves. We can't get there because the trials are flawed. Drugs intended to prevent Alzheimer's disease are being tested on people who are either too far gone or not at risk at all. And that strikes at the core of the way the disease works. You see, Alzheimer's is a silent killer. It lives in your brain, destroying key memory centers for years before symptoms show up and a doctor can diagnose it. That's after years of irreparable damage has already occurred. So, what would happen if we could diagnose Alzheimer's earlier? How would that change things? Well, we think that with an early diagnostic that the drug trials would work because the trials would be filled with the right type of people, those who are pre-symptomatic, but who we know will develop Alzheimer's disease. And that's what we've done. We've created a technology that can diagnose the disease years before anything else that exists today. The test was developed at Emory University by some of the world's leading neuroscientists, experts in Alzheimer's disease and memory disorders. The test studies the way people look at images, the way they experience these new images. We capture that information, we analyze it using our patent-pending algorithms, and we can give a diagnosis. The test is a very simple computer-based memory recognition test that is designed to tap into impairments that exist in the brain's hippocampus, which we have discovered is the first structure to be affected by Alzheimer's disease. I'm going to walk you through how the test works now. A patient comes in. They sit in front of a computer screen that's equipped with an infrared eye tracking device. The patient is told simply to look at the screen as though they're watching TV. Two images come up. They're identical. They stay up on the screen for a few seconds, and then the screen goes dark. Two more images come up. One is new. 
and one is old. It's from the previous screen that they've, they've just viewed. And this sequencing of images continues for a period of time. And during that time, the infrared eye tracking device is capturing where the patient is looking and how much time they're spending on each of the images. And we've gotten staggering results as a, as a, as a result. This is not going forward. <laughs> we know with 99% certainty that if you score on the low end of our test, you're on the trajectory for Alzheimer's disease. And we know with 100% certainty that if you score on the high end of our test, you're not going to develop Alzheimer's in the future. So here I'm going to walk you through what a healthy person looks like taking the test. The red dots is where they're looking. And you'll see that they spend more time looking at the novel image. Here are the two identical for images. The screen will go dark. There's a new image and an old image. And the healthy individual is attracted to the image that they haven't seen before. The interesting thing about this test is that you can't game it. Your brain will not allow you to, to figure out how to take it to try to ma master what we're doing. So now I'm going to show you someone with Alzheimer's disease. You'll see that they spend an equal amount of time looking at the old image as they do the new image. Their brain doesn't recognize that despite the fact that they've just seen one of these images, that it's not new. And I will also tell you that the person who took this test came into our clinic with no signs of Alzheimer's. They were clinically healthy. It's our hope that with this technology, drug companies will be able to develop a drug that works. And with that drug, it's also our hope that people will feel comfortable taking our test, getting the information, and if they're on a course for, for Alzheimer's disease, being able to do something about it. Today's theme is transcend. Imagine a world without Alzheimer's disease. I can. Can you? I can't go back and change the end of my grandfather's story. But we have the chance to change the ending of half the stories in this room. Now that's transcendence. Thank you. Wow, Ali, that's amazing. So with this device, you're, you're obviously, you know, raising the bar on who can receive a diagnosis. I was just curious, does it have anything to do with age as per when you test a person? Yeah, I mean, Alzheimer's disease is a disease of the aging, which is why, you know, once you reach the age of 85, your chances of having it are, um, are so much greater. But with um, a family who has a family history of Alzheimer's, some, very often symptoms will show up. Uh, earlier, and we can find that. Uh, and when you say earlier, what, what, how, how old? It can old show how? up as early as 45. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, this yeah. is absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much for thank sharing this so with much. us today. Ellie Kaplan.